Welcome back to another episode of Cougar TV. I'm Simon Lauritsen. And I'm Romelli Espinosa. The Spring Clothing Exchange will be held on Monday, March 18th, all day long in the auditorium. Come check out the clothing selection for free. Or, if you'd like to donate, bring your clean, quality clothing items to Mr. Urban in the main building, room 111. Stucco elections are quickly approaching, but before that, interested students will have to fill out the registration materials to be eligible for the election. Here are a few current Stucco representatives discussing why you might be interested in joining the student council next year. Um, as a junior class representative, I do the display cases. Um, we do Valentine's singing grams. Um, we set up the um, senior barbecue and senior assassin. Yeah, we do like the dances and then we kind of just promote all the athletic events and go there and help like get student sections started and like do the spirit weeks and help plan most like homecoming events and dances and everything that's going on with that. Um, I talk at pep assemblies. Um, I also do talk at pep rallies, so I did it after the homecoming parade. I also do the morning announcements every single morning and make the playlists for dances, and then I help out my other cabinet members as needed. Um, you know, we kind of make, get to make some posters um, in the class, kind of get to see everybody every day. Um, I don't know, it's got go cool connections in there. After speaking to the student council cabinet members about their responsibilities, we decided to ask them what characteristics they look for in future members. Some characteristics we're looking for next year's student council junior reps um, is somebody who's hardworking, somebody who's definitely going to follow through and put in that hard work, somebody who's going to be willing to um, help people when needed, um, somebody who's just going to be caring and understanding. Super hype. Um, also being able to speak in front of big crowds, um, not having stage fright and having actually a really large stage presence. Um, I think if you're nervous to talk in front of people, this position might not be yours, but if you are okay with it and you also like being a hype beast and um, bringing energy, this position is totally for you. Uh, what would you say to someone who's thinking about becoming a senior rep? Um, I'd kind of say, like, go for it. I mean, it's a pretty good job. I mean, you're going to be busy in the class, but, like, I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Registration packets are due on March 15th, the last day of the third quarter. Contact Mr. Crawford for more information about how to register. Simon, have you ever heard about our study abroad program? Oh yeah, didn't you go to Oaxaca for that last summer? Yeah, I did. Um, but do you also know that we're doing it again this summer? Well yeah, but there are a lot of requirements. So, we sent in one of our Cougar TV correspondents to find out more. Have you ever wanted to study abroad? Well, D11 offers the opportunity for sophomore and juniors to study abroad. To be eligible, you must maintain a good grade in the targeted language, have a minimum GPA of 2.5, hold a valid passport, and obtain verbal recommendation from your world language teacher, along with a letter of recommendation from another teacher. Additionally, you need to submit a completed application, maintain a clean behavior record in D11, ensure your parent or guardian can attend meetings and fill out paperwork, and you must also commit to attending three mandatory meetings before the trip and be dedicated to following all rules. Financially, most expenses are covered, including flights, tuition, and food. However, you'll need to bring your own spending money and have a means of communication back home. Accommodation will be provided through homestays with local families in the host countries. The program typically runs for two weeks during June, and while applications for this year have closed, keep an eye out next January for future opportunities as spots are limited. Wow, Oaxaca looks beautiful. It is. Make sure to apply next year if you're interested. Anyways, let's go to the weather for this week. What is up, Coronado? Welcome back to the Cougar TV YouTube channel. Here's your weather for this week. Monday through Thursday, pretty cloudy, but we have lows of the upper 20s, lower 30s, and highs of the upper 40s, lower 50s. Not bad. Friday and Saturday, it's pretty cold. Only highs of 30s, lows of 20s. And Sunday, it gets back warm again. Still pretty cloudy, though. We got a high of 50 and a lower 31. Stay safe out there. Brr, it's cold outside. Well, good thing some of the students are ingenuitive. Our very own Anna Thompson runs a hat making business. Let's see some of the quality craftsmanship. Um, my first customer was Rowan Bullock from my environmental science class. And they are actually the one that encouraged me to start selling all the crochet items that I make, like my hats and my gloves. They said they were really great quality and they would actually like to buy some. 
So that's where it first started off. My dad's girlfriend, Ada, she um, crochets a lot. And she brought over some yarn. She was like, hey, you want to learn how to crochet? I was like, sure. So I started off with gloves. And um, a little bit afterwards, I wanted to get a little more complicated. So I started making hats instead. And then I was like, you know, I really like animals and people like animals. I think they'd really like to buy animal hats. So I started making bunny hats and I can also make um, other hats like cow hats or uh, wolf hats or um, cat hats. People can get hats by finding me in the hallways. They can also contact me at my email AnnaRThompson06 at iCloud.com or even my school email, Anna.Thompson2 at d11.org. <laughs> it's a good thing our students are such good problem solvers. Not to mention making a profit in the process. Speaking of problem solving, I'm sure we've all heard of our robotics team. <laughs> yeah, those guys do like so much. I don't think I could ever like, like build a robot. OMG, like where would I even start? <clears throat> I mean like, how does it even work? Well, they actually have quite the detailed process for how the robot comes together. We talked to a couple prominent members on the team to learn how their robot is actually built. This is our school's robotics team, Cougars Gone Wired. Most people know that every year they build a robot in January and February, then compete with it in March and sometimes wait, April. Wait, wait. To most people though, that's about where their knowledge about the team ends. But there's so much more to the team than just that. Let's start at the beginning. It's January 6th, and the newest engineering game from the first organization just released. From that Saturday on, the team has six weeks of build season to make their entire robot. But where does it even start? When the new game was released this year, our team spent the first three or four days reading through the rules and coming up with a strategy for how we want to play this game. The game this year requires us to do three things. Pick up this orange game piece called the note, get it into two locations called the speaker and the amp, and climb a chain at the end of the match. So now we know what we need to do, we just need to find out how. This is our brainstorming process. We create a massive list of ideas that has every possible way on how to manipulate the note and how to accomplish our goals. And that's where we start our second phase of the design process, prototyping. Let's jump into week one to see what's going on. Prototyping is super, super important in the engineering process because it's when we get to find out if all the designs that we've brainstormed over the past few days are gonna be viable solutions to the problem at hand. It's when we get to see if, do we change this axle, move it over an inch? Is that gonna work better or worse than the previous design, right? It's and so far this week, we've designed quite a few things. So the two broad subjects are the intake and the outtake, right? So in this game, it's gonna be an intake, um, which is just gonna be something that grabs the notes from the ground, and an outtake, which is gonna be a shooter. Once the team members have these prototypes, we do hours of testing to find out which designs work the best and which ones don't work at all. Now that the team has settled on what designs they want to use, they put them on a computer using Fusion 360 and some math, then send the designs off to Vertec, a local machining company, who sends back the shiny metal parts that go on the final robot. After that, it's basically like building a Lego set, except that the Lego set does not work or go together properly until you modify it and rebuild it multiple times. And that's about where the robotics team is at currently in the season. Now all they need to do is make a lot of minor tweaks and hopefully win. I feel like I actually understand what's going on here now. Me too. It's such an intricate process, but it honestly kind of makes sense now. I can't wait to see how they do in their regionals in a couple of days. With spring sports coming around the corner, Coronado is clearing their calendars and gearing up to show their support for the upcoming season. What's wonderful is how other teams are even taking the time to attend other sports games and even band or orchestra concerts. I wonder what support means to them and their motives behind going to other events as a team. We interviewed a few of Coronado's athletes, Ava Friesma, Reality Smith, and Annika Settemeyer to get some insight on their team's movement for supporting each other. Here at Coronado, we emphasize going to other events and supporting each other. Let's see what a few of our athletes have to say about their team's movement to support one another. The boys basketball team is probably going to go to, like, we'll go to some volleyball games and, like, I do track, so they'll probably come support at track meets and then we'll support, yeah. Just like we did, how we brought the whole soccer team to the basketball game, I think the basketball team loved that. They loved having 
um, supporters and people cheering them on. So I think that would be great if we could have like other other teams go and support. I think it just really builds a community, honestly. I think it's it's really fun to see people come out and cheer and support. And even if you're just in the stands, it's it's like you can feel the energy and it's really cool to watch people get excited and then you get excited with them and then everyone ends up having fun. Come show your support by attending all of Coronado's upcoming events and sports. It's awesome Coronado's sports teams are moving forward to support each other. You can check out when our most upcoming events will be at the Coronado website. Speaking of sports, let's take a peek at the scores for this week. Superb performance, Cougars. The girls' soccer season has just begun, but there's a boys' soccer player that's super interesting. Well, you got to be talking about their senior captain from this year, Donovan Corbett. I heard he's going to Costa Rica next year to play professional soccer. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I would love to learn more about Donovan's bright future. If you've ever watched a Coronado boys' soccer game, you've probably noticed one of their team captains leading from the center of the field. Donovan Corbett has been playing soccer his entire life and plans to continue his soccer journey in an exceptional way. I played soccer for probably about 14 years. I started when I was four years old, just playing recreational around Colorado Springs. Um, then I moved to a more competitive league probably when I was eight. For the first um, 12 years of my soccer experience, my dad was my coach. Um, and so he really helped to grow me as a player and as a person. And without him, I definitely wouldn't be the player I am today. So I, I had a, uh the fortunate opportunity to have coached him since he was a little little uh, fellow. The guiding principles for the way that I coach and, and what I want to see out of players, the intangibles is being the hardest worker and having the most fun, having a positive, supportive uh, attitude. And I've drilled that into him uh, since he was, was really young. And so he's exhibited those two traits, a, uh, a positive attitude and a, uh, an effort uh, in all moments, regardless of success or failure. After being advised to take a gap year to gain soccer experience before college, Donovan chose a location that would help ignite his future career plans while playing the sport he loves. Yeah, next year I'm planning on taking a gap year before I go to college. I'm going to Costa Rica to play for a second division pro team. Um, going down there to both learn Spanish but also improve my soccer. After that, I want to play Division I soccer while studying uh, environmental engineering. After college, I would love to go back down to Latin America or Costa Rica and use what I learned um, with that environmental engineering degree in order to help the people down there um, and really make an impact to the uh, communities in Latin America. In Costa Rica, I want the opportunity to really get to know another culture and the people that make up that culture. Um, I want to learn the Spanish language um, and I really want to meet a different level of soccer and the people that live that soccer within that culture. I'm incredibly proud of him. Regardless of what it is he does, if he decides to do it, I know that he's going to work hard to be as successful as he can be in that endeavor and he leads by example. And it's so cool to watch um, the, uh, the young man that he's become and super excited to see where he takes that um, just in life and in all aspects. I'm really excited for what the future holds because I've put, up a, put in a lot of work up until this point and I look forward to putting in more work in order to reach my goals and my potential. Man, he's gonna help a lot of people in his life. Yeah, the devotion and hard work he puts into his goals is really inspiring. Not to mention his amazing support system. Talking about devotion and hard work, have you ever tried to play a string instrument? Yeah, it sounded like a dying cat. Oh, well thankfully, Coronado's orchestra puts in the hard work so they, uh, they don't sound like that. Really? I've never heard them play. You know, lots of people haven't. So, we interviewed Miss West and a couple of players to find out what they're all about. The Coronado Orchestra is putting tons of work this year. Their pieces are challenging and they are nationally traveling to further the musical knowledge. We interviewed Miss West, the orchestra conductor, and some members to find out more. So the pieces that we're playing right now are difficult. I didn't expect them to be as difficult as they are for a school orchestra. They're faster than stuff I've played in like middle school. Um, they include more technical sections, but that means that they're also more fun. 
we um, have two levels of orchestra at Coronado. There's an advanced orchestra, which is called Chamber Orchestra. Students have to audition for that group, but um, for the lower level group, anybody who has experience playing a string instrument is welcome to join. So we're playing a piece called Symphony No. 2 by, I believe it's Emily Mayer. That one's our harder piece. It's three pages long. I'd say that's what our orchestra is probably working harder most with. And then we're playing a piece named Overture. And that one, uh, we've been working really much on style for that one. And um, the last one's The Gift. And that one's just one page. It's pretty easy, but we're preparing those three for contest. Um, we're going to be traveling to New York with the band here and with Doherty and Palmer Orchestras. And um, we're going to be attending the New York Philharmonic, going to the Lincoln Center to hear a jazz concert, going to a Broadway show, mm -hmm. as well as going to many other um, New York tourist spots. We went to watch the Colorado Springs Philharmonic and that was one of my favorite things. We rode the bus down to Denver and we got to eat at the Cheesecake Factory and then we watched them and that was super fun. I had a great time. And it's been great to work with Miss West. She's a great conductor and it's been fun to be able to work on my orchestra abilities in school rather than just in my extracurriculars. There's a wonderful group of people that I get to work with every day and it's been really fun. Dang, I want to go on one of those trips. It sounds really fun. Yeah, but they have to work hard for it all year long in the rehearsal room. That's true. I just might have to try playing again and go with them next year. You know, I believe in you. Hey, Rue, uh, are you a fan of true crime? Oh, yeah. I love hearing about the vile intricacies of the human mind that cause people to commit absolutely horrific and heinous acts. I know exactly what you mean. Well, guess what? What? I heard... Someone stole clothes from the lost and found. What? You gotta be lying. Unfortunately not. Check it out. Yo, what's up, man? Oh, what's up, man? Oh, yeah, what you doing right now? I'm just going through stuff. Oh, uh, okay, okay, you lose something? No. Alright, alright, yeah, I see how it is. Yeah, man, you should take some from here sometime. They got some good What is that is that single stitch? Man, that's awesome. This one's brown. I got some fucking awesome clothes here. Man, that's that's great. You should take something here sometime. Are you sure? I mean, it's the lost and found. Oh, uh, you know what they say, man. Finders keepers, losers weepers, you know. Lost and found, that's free reign, baby. Hey! Oh, sh It's police officer Simon! You boys aren't stealing clothes from the lost and found, are ya? Uh... Don't you know that the custodians and the lovely staff in the front office work night and day to get people's lost clothes back there so they have a chance of finding them someday? You disgust me. Now get out of here. Ooh, is this single stitch? <laughs> Score! I can't believe someone would take clothes that don't belong to them. Yeah, especially with police officer Simon making rounds around campus. Finally, for any sophomores or juniors with a passion for helping others and shaping Coronado culture, you are invited to sign up to become a link leader next year. The link crew is looking for enthusiastic juniors and seniors who are ready to have fun and be a positive influence. To apply, simply scan any of the QR codes on the link posters throughout the building or access the link on Coronado's homepage. The deadline to apply is Friday, March 15th. If you have any questions, please reach out to Ms. Skeens in the Counseling Department. Well, that's it for this episode of Cougar TV. I'm Simon Lawrenson. And I'm Romelli Espinosa. Stay, Stay classy, classy, Coronado! Coronado. Too easy. Too easy. All right. Yeah, it took so long. Just the longest thing we've ever. <laughs> no. Uh, I think